first set 6-4, but Ivanovic stamped her authority early for an impressive start. Tricky and nifty little slice there. This is what she did the other night against Stoza under pressure. She just in, kept going in. after the serve, serving a high percentage of first serves. And when she does hit the first serve in, it is a very, very good serve. Well, earlier, world number one Rafael Nadal defeated Gael Monfils in straight sets to reach the fourth round at the Open. Nadal beat the Frenchman 6-1, 6-2, 6-3 to reach the last 16. And Roger Federer has reached the fourth round for the 13th straight year. Federer beat Tamaraz Gavashvili of Russia 6-2, 6-3, 6-3 to book a date with Joe Wilfred Songer. Spaniard Gabin Muguruza sent former world number one Caroline Wozniacki crashing out of the tournament. No, then no one is unstoppable. No? Tonight I think I played a great match, very happy the way that I played against, <coughs> against a very tough opponent like Gael, so that makes the, the level that I played tonight uh, better because it was against a against tough opponent. Good player like, like Gael, always very difficult to play against. And um, and that's it. No, no, just one very good day. It's a great win. It's a great win. I am. Um, I don't know if it's. I think it's the first time. I, no, not the first time. I think I win a top ten player. But it's, it's amazing to win in the center court a top ten player like Caro. So I'm really happy. I feel great. You know, like I said, I, I really I wake up and I feel like you know. Um, I don't need like a hot bath or anything, you know, I'm, you know, one minute later you're like, okay, well, if I needed to play tennis now, I could, you know, so that's very positive, you know, because I've heard of different stories or, you know, when you're really, you have a lot of muscle pain or you really hurt sometimes in your worst days, it takes you a long time to feel somewhat normal. Um, so right now I feel uh, very fresh. In the A-League, the Central Coast Mariners got home against Sydney FC. The defending champions had to work hard against a disorganised Sydney side. Milos Tijovsky was the lone scorer in a game where there were several near misses from both sides. Meantime, Wellington Phoenix stunned the Melbourne victory 5-0 in Wellington. The Phoenix doubled their entire seasonal tally goals scored at home and the win keeps the Phoenix well and truly in the race for the top six. In the English Premier League, Liverpool came from behind to record a two-all draw against Aston Villa. Daniel Sturridge and Steven Gerrard scored for the Reds. At the Emirates Stadium, Santi Cazorla inspired a 2-0 home victory for Arsenal against Fulham. And the Spaniards scored twice in the second half. The victory was the Gunners' fifth in succession in the Premier League. Elsewhere, Manchester City passed the 100-goal mark for the season as they saw off a determined Cardiff side to stay one point behind tabletop as Arsenal. West Ham dropped back into the bottom three as Newcastle ended a run of three losses with a win at Upton Park. Sunderland came back from 2-0 down, uh, down to draw against Southampton. And Crystal Palace moved off the bottom of the Premier League table with a victory against Stoke. Speculation is mounting that billionaire James Packer is negotiating a multi-million dollar deal to buy part of the NRL club, the South Sydney Rabbitohs. News Limited is reporting that Packer would buy Peter Holmes Accord's 37.5% stake and become a partner in the club with Russell Crowe. The speculation is being pushed by supporters group Rebel Rabbitohs, which opposed Holmes Accord and Crowe jointly buying 75% of the club in 2006 for $3 million. Well, this summer on ABC News 24, we've been bringing you Inside Edge, a special program featuring icons of Australian sport. Tonight, host Angela Pulverenti speaks to former Australian netballers Liz Ellis and Catherine Cox. Kath, look, we all know the well-told story about Liz, you know, greatest in the game, role model, Order of Australia, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Tell us something evil about her. Oh my goodness, how long have we got? You've, right. got, you've got at least 15 minutes. Just start and with the most. I can tell. Oh, there's just so much. The good thing about her, I guess, playing with her for so long and having such an elite job to do 
is that outside of netball, it was nothing but fun and, you know, a bit of mischievous behaviour. And... When was the moment that you became friends? There's always a moment or an event or an experience that oh. sort of takes you into that other place in a relationship. Oh, it was probably just the first time I noticed her being naughty. <laughs> it's like, oh, there she is, there's my new friend. Kath was actually point. friends with my little sister. They played schoolgirls together and I used to think that uh, my sister Kath had this obnoxious friend Kath and then we got the same team and we're like, oh, we're as obnoxious as each other. <laughs> so it was probably the New South Wales team in 1994 yeah. that yeah. we first made and she was 12 mm. and I was a little bit older. And we just were mates from then on. Tell me, um, I mean, you would have played, obviously, as, as Liz being captain of the Diamonds. What sort of leader was she? Can you think of a moment, either on court or off, that really captures her style as a leader? Big perfectionist. And obviously, because she, you know, was the best in the game, that was just sort of a trait, a personality trait, I guess. But if everyone else was stuffing up as, as well around her, would, I guess, lose it fairly quickly at that. Um, no uncertain terms, but that made us all better players. So certainly just one of those players, one of those leaders that expected the best out of everybody and would let you know about it if you weren't performing. Did she ever have to let you know about it? Oh, absolutely, all the time. I used to get in the car and go, oh, at least did this and then she did that. And then the next day, it was all over and we're best friends. <laughs> mates, we used to finish training and or we'd play against each other and beat the life out of each other at training. And we couldn't look at each other in the train. I was like, I can't look at her. I've got to go home and get in my car. And I can't look at her. And then the next time, I was like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Cause, so in training, you'd be defending or cats. defending cats. So, and, you know, people often ask me the toughest person I've played against. And at a test match level, Irene Van Dyke is the obvious one um, for New Zealand. But on a day-to-day -day level, playing against cats at training, and we had it was our motto that we went harder at each other than anyone else because it made us better players. It made me a better defender. I'd go out and play against other shooters and think, this is easy compared to playing Catherine. Mm. Let's take a look at the satellite and a large low pressure system over Western Australia's interior is triggering widespread rain and thunderstorms while directing heat to the west. A trough over New South Wales and Victoria is causing showers and storms. Highs are keeping southern parts of the country and southeastern Queensland mostly dry. Now looking around the country at what to expect tomorrow, storms in Queensland's north, hot in the southwest, warm in the east and mostly sunny in the south. In New South Wales, it'll be warm with showers in the east, it'll be hot and sunny in the west. Mostly sunny in Victoria with very warm conditions in the north and mild in the south. Down to Tasmania where it will be mild with the chance of some showers in the north of the state. South Australia will be warm in the north and, and cooler in the south. There will be some rain and storms spreading to the northwest. Warmer conditions in Western Australia south, but much warmer in the north. There will be rain and storms in the north and the east of the state. And showers and storms are expected in much of the Northern Territory. Now looking ahead to Tuesday's forecast for the capital cities, late showers in Brisbane, the chance of rain in Sydney, clearing showers in Melbourne, possible showers in Hobart, windy in Adelaide, sunny in Perth and showers in Darwin. And that is ABC News for now. Stay with us. Inside Edge is coming up next.